Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a young woman who can tell you anything you want to know about the fashion scene here in Germany, as well as about developments internationally. And here she is in person, Jessica Weiss. Hello, thank you. Jessica, thank you very much for joining us today on Talking yes. Germany. It's a great pleasure. Now, uh, Jessica, often known simply as Jessie, started what was one of the first ever fashion blogs here in Germany. That was back in 2007, and since then it's gone from strength to strength. Currently, it gets over 600,000 clicks a month, mainly from young women who want to be right up to the minute on uh, not just fashion, but also lifestyle in general. So I'm sure we can look forward to hearing what the successful, ambitious and very opinionated Opinionated Jessica has to say about the following topics. Sock it to them. Many Germans are, it seems, hardcore fashion pragmatists. Comfort, convenience and a whiff of tradition are the watchwords. Fighting for internet rights, we find out about a new group, mainly bloggers, who've joined forces to lobby against state interference in the internet. And taking a break, Germans are obsessed with what they call Urlaub, that is taking a vacation. Jessica Weiss talks us through the trends and tells us why she gets so little Urlaub. <laughs> 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 Jessica is laughing wryly about the fact that she doesn't get much holiday. Jessica, I tell you what I'd like to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad that you're here in so many ways, but specifically about this. Recently, I had the privilege of doing the live commentary of the royal wedding oh, for Deutsche. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> it was That's a big great. challenge. It needed a lot of preparation. Yes. And the big problem for me and my colleague who did it was the was the dress because we didn't, you know, they kept it under wraps until the last minute. Same with me. Were you watching? Of course, yes. Of course, yes, yeah. I and did. what did you think of the dress? Uh, I liked it a lot, actually. Of course, it was um, it was very conservative for um, the house of Alexander McQueen, who was more into uh, great fashion and more voluminous. Um, but um, the dress was beautiful. You can't say anything uh, else than that. Um, so she looked great and... That's what it's all about, right? Simple elegance, yeah. But there, yeah. Was, a, there was just a little yeah. hint of décolleté there. Yeah, but it was really just a hint. Her, <laughs> sister, just... her sister did that pretty, pretty uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Pippa, yeah? Should yes. we talk? No, we're not going to talk about Pippa, yeah? Let's talk about fashion. You're, you're a fashion blogger. Mm -hmm. What is fashion? What makes fashion different from just getting up in the morning and throwing on some clothes? Mm, I think you have to, yeah, you have to think a bit about it and be be self-conscious and 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 yeah, show what you have more or less. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, in Germany it's very um, it's very usual that you just uh, dress uh, what the weather is like or boots when it's cold. Um, but but fashion to me is um, that you that you know who you are and that you dress up like that. So it um, shows your character, more or less. <laughs> I'm looking at you very closely while you're telling me. What, what, does, what, <laughs> you're, what, what you're wearing today, Jessica, what does it tell us about you? Yeah, um, my shoes are from Topshop, actually. Okay. Um, from London. Mm -hmm. And uh, plateau shoes, I like that, mm -hmm. because I can't really walk on high heels, so okay. I have to um, do the plateau thing. Mm -hmm. And I wear a Scandinavian dress from a Danish designer called Stine Goya. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, Scandinavian fashion you a do. lot. You've got a weakness for Scandinavian things, yes. haven't you? Mm. Yeah. Uh, in the early days, you got together with your friend Julia Knoller. Mm -hmm. you, you, you had this uh, the blogging site that you set up. Were you, you were doing it to earn a little bit of money on the side with your hobby, or were you doing it for nothing in the early for days? For nothing. Well, it for nothing. Was, no, we started it out of boredom, actually. Boredom. Uh, yeah, we both studied very boring things. I did marketing communication, and um, it, it had not, not it had nothing to do with what I really like. So we just set up the blog, put pictures online from our weekends, concerts, and of course things we found on the web. And that was uh, that was the beginning. And yeah. your audience was uh, was your mum's <laughs> only, <laughs> actually yes, and some friends. Um, but that was it, like 10 people. Okay, that was then and this is now. Yeah. Everything has changed. Everything has changed, yeah. Limaz today is a, is a news website, more or less. Of course, it's still subjective and I share some personal things, um, but the more viewers you have, you can't be that open-minded anymore. So um, today, um, yeah, it's pretty professional because we um, we came to the publishing house Borda Media in Munich and um, today it's my day job, so uh, I really work hard on the on the whole side. And how many how many people have you got uh, working for you? 
Uh, not that many, actually. Oh. Um, of course. You're not a manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I am. You are. A bit. I have to be, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but of course, I have two assistants mm -hmm. um, who help me through daily business, and of course, a person who helps us with the website. Yeah, but that's but it. You've mentioned the backing you get from this publishing house, this very big publishing house, yeah. Burda, here in Germany. I don't, they've got a turnover, an annual turnover of something like one and a half billion euros. Yeah, They're a really big operation. Yeah. What? Be more specific. What do they get from you, and what do you get from them? In the beginning, for them, it was more like a test. What can we do with with a blog? Because it's a very new medium. So to see um, how um, yeah important um, can it be one day? Um, and for them, it's of course image and prestige, and one day hopefully um, to earn a lot of money with it. <laughs> yeah, precisely. It's a, for, yeah. for them, it's a new business model, effectively, because they, they must be a little bit worried. They built their empire on traditional magazines. Yes. Yes, of course, and they you, have to. You've got the alternative. Yeah, exactly. We have to. Everyone has to uh, look what they do on the web uh, today. Uh, of course, there are applications for for mobile services, but um, the internet is so important. Every magazine needs to have uh, or has to have uh, a good working website, and blogs are just a very good new medium for that. Mm. And when you when you the the big difference between a, a blog and a conventional magazine mm -hmm. is that you get things out there very very quickly. Exactly. And very subjectively. Yeah. First thing, I have to be very fast. <laughs> um, this is the medium. I, I, it's very important. I can take a picture from you now and put it on my website in two minutes and then just have one sentence and, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, and I'm so fast. And then uh, it's very subjective. I share my opinion about a lot of things I like and I show my readers uh, yeah, the world through my eyes. And um, that's, uh, yeah, this is the two things that are very important. Okay, we're going to talk about that subjectivity in just a minute. Well, we're talking fashion, obviously, and certainly when you walk around the heart of Berlin, you really see a lot of very trendy people. This is in the heart of Berlin, Berlin where Jessica lives, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but there could be a case for arguing that they are the exception here in Germany as a whole, rather than the rule. Let's go back to that old uh, hoary subject, Jessica, the socks, the socks and the sandals. I'm not going to tell you yet whether I wear socks under my uh, sandals or not. Uh, what's wrong with socks and sandals? It just doesn't look good. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is that people are trying to make it fashionable today. There are socks, people are wearing socks and their high heels. And it was on the catwalk. But Anna Winter said, I will never accept that. This is not fashion to me. <laughs> you know, but this is what happens with fashion, isn't it? One, so a couple of yeah. fashion writers start saying something is fashionable and then people start wearing it. Things that they, a couple of years ago, wouldn't have you know, Somehow, dared to. Somehow, yeah, if it's the yeah. right time, sometimes mm -hmm. it slips through. <laughs> OK, let me ask you this, talking about, how, uh, about fashion trends. What's, what's, the, what's the fashion decade at the moment? What, which is the decade we should be looking to? Um, at the moment, definitely the 70s, I the think. The 70s? Yes, we yeah. had the 80s and the 90s. Too the much 80s crunch. have gone now. Oh, yeah. Can't see that anymore. So mm -hmm. the 70s, the boho, um, of course, the platform shoes and the flare jeans are coming back at the moment. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah. me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, because this is interesting for me, because... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to tell you now, I'm confessing, from my age perspective, yeah. yeah. when I look in some of the windows and some of the stores in the area where, of Berlin where you live, down in Mitte, down in Prenzlauberg, down in Mitte especially, mm -hmm. I see pairs of trousers that look like the pairs of trousers I used to wear when I was 17 years old. What is so creative about that? I think it's, it's always another interpretation. Maybe mm. um, there are just little details that changed. So, um, but fashion in general has, um, yeah, it needs inspiration. So uh, you can't invent anything uh, or you can't invent things new all the time. So you have to look back and get some um, inspiration from that. So that's sure. fine, yeah. Okie dokie. Talking about looking back, not quite looking back, but what it, it, in Germany there are, there are a few fashion icons, people like Jill Sander, Karl Lagerfeld, mm. Hugo Boss, these kind of people, yeah? yeah? They're still sort of around today, a wee little bit, but really they're sort of, you know, they're, 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 they belong to fashion history almost mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Are we going to see new German designers of that stature coming through? At the moment, unfortunately, I don't see that. Um, because when I talk to young designers from Germany, they always say, well, the German market is not very important for us. Um, we have to go to Asia and uh, sell stuff there. It's just very difficult for them here. And there, is, there are just so, so many good people from all over the world. Um, it was just easier, um, you know, like 40, 50 years ago, to start something very unique, like Lagerfeld, for example, did. And when you say the German market isn't, isn't, isn't good for us, when fashion designers mm -hmm. say that, I mean, Germans have got a lot of money in their pockets. 
Yeah, but um, but they dress very traditional and um, they don't spend that much money on, like, let's say, high class fashion. Okay. Yeah. And um, when we talk about Berlin, Berlin projects itself as a city that's got a really buzzy, edgy fashion scene. Mm -hmm. It projects itself as sort of one of Europe's fashion capitals. Is that a myth or is it true? No, partially it's definitely true. Mm -hmm. um, because for Germany, Berlin is the most important city. And when I go um, to other countries, especially New York, when I say I'm from Berlin, I live in Berlin, people are like crazy, oh. uh, they love it. <laughs> of course, it, ha has something to, it has something to do with fashion, but also the lifestyle here, the parties and the club scene. So I think it's a mixture. Now, I mentioned earlier that when uh, Jessica Weiss started out as a fashion blogger, she did so in collaboration with her friend Julia Knoller. They no longer cooperate in quite the same way, but they have put together a book reflecting on all the thrills and spills of fashion blogging. Here it is. It's called Morderstrecker, which you could more or less translate into English as fashion feature. <laughs> the word elite was mentioned. Are you part of an elite, Jessica? I think somehow, yes. Ah. But the fashion blogger sphere is, uh, is a very big circle and it's different to the classic things that mm. we saw here. If there's one thing in the world you really know about, it's fashion first of all, but then it's, it's the blogosphere, yeah? Yes. Do you have a feeling like the people here, the bloggers here mentioned in this report, that there is some sort of, you know, that some sort of pressure could be exercised on you, your freedoms could be restricted? Um, in some ways, yes. So this is, it's very good that they uh, did that and uh, we need it. We need to, we need to talk about um, special things, um, but really risky? No, not really. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Tell me this. I'm very, um, the, the blogosphere is a place where everybody should and can speak up. Yes. Is that good? That's true. It's true, and I think it's good, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, there appears to me to be a slight problem, because then suddenly everybody has got an opinion, suddenly everybody is an expert. Is that good? Um, of course, it depends. Uh, it's not always good, um, but you need the audience, of course. This is one main, uh, it's the most important thing, because if you have the audience, um, you can say, uh, I'm an expert. Um, but that everyone's speaking up is, is just uh, normal. I think you do that in real life as well. But now you just do it on, on a blog. Mm. Yeah. I'm just interested at the point where, where the blogger, like you, becomes somebody like me, an old-fashioned mm. journalist, where there, where there is that watershed. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, especially in fashion, of course, there is the the traditional media, and they think, well, they didn't uh, they didn't learn it, they didn't uh, learn to write about fashion, and for them, of course, it's it's really strange that there are people who have no clue about anything. Um, but I had to learn it, so oh. I, I, you know. Yeah, because this is the point. Because you're, you're very you're proud yeah. of what you've achieved. I can yes. sense that you're proud of what you've achieved. Yeah. yeah. So you are an expert. In yeah, the old-fashioned sense. Somehow, yeah. yes, and I'm still learning, but mm -hmm. this is a good thing. That's why, I, why I'm so interested in things, yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a different, a new view. Where was the last place you went on holiday? Uh, Thailand. Thailand. Oh, no, it's not true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been in Austria for a couple of days. Good yeah. old Austria. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, OK, that fits in here. With the, the, the economy is booming here in Germany again. Uh, since the financial crisis, uh, the economy is rolling along and people are indulging in one of their favourite pastimes and planning their next vacation. Let's see where they're going now. Before, Jessica, the trendy traveller, who's sometimes in Austria, sometimes in Thailand, uh, she apparently gets very little proper holiday, that's what I'm supposed to believe, but she'll be telling us shortly where people ought to be going. Germans love sun, sea and sand. And now that the worst of the financial crisis is over, they can once again go on holiday. Germans are the world champions when it comes to travelling. It's a top priority. We have to recover from the treadmill. It gives you the chance to think about things you don't usually have time for. As a result of the political unrest in Egypt and Tunisia, Spain has benefited from an increase in holiday bookings. Turkey is also welcoming greater numbers of tourists. But many Egyptian hotel owners are hoping tourism will increase in the summer if things settle down. Demand is rising slowly. There are some very attractive offers. Tunisia is lagging behind Egypt a bit, but we think it'll improve in the coming months. You can book a week's holiday there for 299 euros. Although you can't spend a week in London or Rome for that price, trips to cities are becoming more popular. 
But whether the beach or the city, researchers say going on holiday is what makes most Germans the happiest. We'd rather do without everyday items or postpone buying a car or a sofa than spend the best weeks of the year at home. Many of us work, save our money and look forward to vacation for almost 50 weeks a year. Last year, Germans spent 60 billion euros on holidays abroad and the tourist industry hopes 2011 will be another record year. Mm, Germans spent a lot of money traveling abroad. Germans are obsessed with holiday, with Urlaub. True or false? True. 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 Yeah. Always looking forward to the next. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I promised our audience that you're going to tell us something about one thing that people like to do, and I must say I, I, I like doing this, is these, you know, really short city breaks, going somewhere mm. for four days and trying out some place you've never been before or finding yeah. out more about, you know, some... And people normally go to Barcelona or Paris or wherever, you know. Where, what are the sort of secret destinations? I like Scandinavia here as well. Ah, Scandinavian <laughs> fashion Copenhagen, and Scandinavian cities. Yeah, yeah, Copenhagen, Stockholm, great cities. Yeah. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also been to um, Tel Aviv uh, last year. Good one. So these are um, yeah. also cities I would love to see more. Yes. That's a great tip. Shall I give you my two tips for yes. interesting cities that are worth, you know, a couple of days yeah. uh, for sure? Antwerp. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Great Lots of city. Fashion. Also yeah. for fashion, yeah. yeah exactly, and Bologna. Um, I've been to Bologna as well, yeah, for oh. a school exchange. Oh, there you go. Well, you've yeah. been around, yeah. <laughs> um, and here in here in Germany, is it just Berlin or are there other sexy cities out there in Germany? Um, I lived in uh, Cologne before mm -hmm. I moved to Berlin. It's also a very nice city, not very beautiful, but great people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. No, Hamburg. Hamburg is great. Hamburg is wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. I love Hamburg. Yes. I absolutely yes. love Hamburg. Okay, so you do fashion, you do lots of other things on, you do lifestyle. Yes. Yeah? What is, the, what is the big lifestyle trend that I might need to be aware of to have some credibility? <laughs> Trendy. Um, oh, that's difficult. When, when I travel a lot, to me, it's uh, learning languages. Mm. I don't know why, but it, it's, it's just very, um, it's always very good to speak more than just English, like French or Italian. Mm. That's why I'm uh, learning French at the moment. Oh, but of course, good. this is not the greatest lifestyle advice, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've got to ask you, we, we're, we're running out of time quickly, but we're, we're, where are you going next? You're very young, but you're already very successful. What's your goal? Mm, I think, I mean, I've been working on Le Mans for four years now and um, I grew up with a project. I want to make it even bigger and better, of mm -hmm. course, and to make a brand out of it. Mm -hmm. Still, there are some uh, things I would like to try out. Yeah, definitely. The book was first and maybe something... Maybe another book. <laughs> maybe, or uh, something... <laughs> <A> novel. <laughs> oh, no, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to finish off with our quick quiz. Mm -hmm. Some very quick questions. Quick answers, please, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Ladylike or girl power? Ladylike. Extravagant or understatement? Understatement. 70s or 80s? 70s. Kate or Pippa? Mm. <laughs> Kate. <laughs> wedges or high heels? Wedges. Oh, I hate wedges. OK, that's your lot from this week's <laughs> guest, our very own fashionista, Jessica Weiss. If you've enjoyed her company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss. <laughs>